Yes, yes, I hear you. I hear you. Don't you think that it's in my best interest to farm the Anius Tower of God episode? We're going to be watching these on a weekly basis. You have to stop fucking begging. I'm going to give it to you. Just be patient. If I see motherfuckers begging, you're just blocked. Let's begin. In a world as complex as Tower of God, every little detail behind the settings or the characters serves some purpose. The webtoon goes to great lengths to develop this fantastical environment. They present us with a story that's shrouded by mystery, then slowly revealed layer by layer. And a lot of this development that helps to enrich the mystery we soon become. I feel like this kind of just looks like spoilers because these are scenes that I haven't even seen in episode 1, but it's out of context, so does it matter? Come captivated by takes place in the early chapters. Lucky for us, most of it is covered in the anime. But just like with any other adaptation, there's some stuff that isn't. So, just like how we did with Shield Hero or Goblin Slayer, allow me to take you through each episode of Tower of God and showcase what exactly didn't make it to the anime. Yes sir, but why do I see only 10 episodes here? Why, 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 why is there 10 episodes here? Where, 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 where is until episode 13? I thought, I thought there's 13 episodes. What, what's going on with the last three? Is, there, is, it, is it alive? I, I, what's going on, man? And hopefully this new series will give those of you who haven't read the webtoon the most complete Tower of God experience that you can get. But, but first, before we get started. Before I get started, this video- There, there it is. I'm so good with these. I'm, uh, this, 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 this is basically any news. You know how in anime reactions I always say, opening. This is the equivalent of any news for me whenever I start reacting. But first, before I get started. Episode 1, Ball covering chapter 0 to chapter 5 of the webtoon. Right from the beginning, we were given Rachel's motivations for entering the tower. Rahel. She was unhappy with the dark world that she currently lived in. All she this is an actually outside world. This is not inside the tower. The tower is revealed to have three layers. Outer, middle, inner, or some shit. But in episode 2, I'm pretty sure when Bam was talking to Leroro, he said like, but we're from the outside. So like, not even like within the outer layer, right? She wanted was nothing more than to bear witness to the sky that she'd only ever heard about in legend. So after Rachel disappears and what, what the fuck did she even learn about the star from the legend? What is this? Heard about in legend. So after Rachel disappears into the gate, Bam awakes to find himself not far behind. Bam. He was in the tower, but the context behind how he got there wasn't quite given. We know from head on that Bam is considered to be a type of visitor. Irregular. A person who wasn't specifically invited to enter the tower. Opened Instead, it himself. We learned that he forcibly opened the gate to the tower himself. An occurrence that didn't happen very often. But when it did, that person would become known as an irregular. And what is so special about an irregular? Head on? No, not head on. Leroro literally was about to fucking tell us what's going on. And then it cut away. It's like every time an irregular has arrived to the tower, Dot dot dot. And it just cut off, and then we went back to the Shinsu test, and I'm like, what's going on, bro? Now, when Hedon introduces himself, he wasn't yet aware of who Bam was. You see, unlike how the anime implied, we don't know for sure if Rachel came through this same area. So- Where the fuck is she right now, dude? She's not even in the test with us. I didn't see her in the Shinsu test. Now, it could be separate cohorts. I thought that she was part of the same cohort. Maybe she's not. Maybe she's already advanced a different test. Maybe she's wearing, like- a hoodie or a mask because there's a lot of people that's wearing disguises or at least it seems like disguises right their their faces are kind of obstructed by different clothing so i don't know rachel is a regular right so she should have probably not gone through the same way that bomb would have entered because he's an irregular i don't fucking know man instead we see head on ask for bam's name from which we learn it's the 25th bam <laughs> bro's name is a literal calendar night. Ishibo <laughs> Pam. Cause this means night. Day and night, Pam. <laughs> 25. <laughs> Bro sounds like a fucking specimen. Bro sounds like a fucking Amazon like factory worker employee number 20. Pam? Why the 25th? Is there a 26th Pam? Is there a 27th Pam? Does it go all the way to 31st? Do we count 30? What about leap years? Do, is there a 28th Pam? What's, what's going on here? Why, why is his name like this? A name that simply refers to the day he was born. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. The day that he was born. I doubt, it's the, I doubt it's the actual day it was born, though. It's because that's the day that he met Rachel out of the rubbles, right? Bam being a Korean word that literally translates to night. 
Pum. Ma'am then asks Pum. if he'd seen Ray that, that art is crazy. This this beginning TOG art is actually like one punch man webtoon level of art. It gets way better I've seen, but like goddamn the progression, man. But Hedon didn't really give a clear answer. All he could say was that Bams and everyone else's answers awaited at the top of the tower. If he Climb. was in search of something, then that's where it'd be, because literally anything and everything is at the top. Be it money, immortality, power, or magic, every dream or wish could be attained if you climbed the tower. I feel like I kinda got spoiled there of Overlord twice, but it probably doesn't matter. Hour. And that seemed to be the absolute truth to this world. But climbing the tower wasn't something so easily accomplished. Each floor had an administrator, and each administrator gave a test that needed to be passed. But this isn't even the floor we're on right now. I don't even know, actually. Because we were in this, like, this room with head on, and apparently that was a test to be able to climb the tower, but psych, that was actually a test so that you could take a test to take the tower. So right now, when we're doing the battle royale or the... You know, the whole, like, uh, Shinsu test, and later on this scene, which I'm sure is going to be episode 3, because we saw teasers at the end of episode 2. Are we on a fucking floor? Are we on floor 0? Are we on floor 1? Like, wh what is going on? Only by passing that test could you prove that you were qualified to make your way to the next floor. Okay. Bam was currently on the first floor. Okay. And just as you'd expect, a head-on was its administrator. Ah, so that is the first floor of the tower. I wonder if there's like a zeroth floor, if that even makes sense. But okay, head on was the admin. His test had rather simple rules. In order to pass, all Blow Bam ball had up. to do was break the ball guarded Bust by the giant ball. white armored eel. A type of fish that lives in the Shinsu which flows around the tower. We don't learn yet what this Shinsu is. Mana. But the fact remains that Bam had to take on a giant monster while in a pool of it. Which is- Oh yeah, 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 cause like remember this episode? A piece of shit, a sniper? Because, like, Leroto, uh, I, I think he simulated, like, the 31st floor's levels of atmospheric Shinsu, and this is the amount that you have to take on a daily basis, and he couldn't even do it. So I wonder what that level was in that eel cage, you know, when we we're trying to bust that ball. It's pretty impressive considering Probably way it's higher. a substance we find out is difficult to deal with in high concentrations. Now, there appeared to be some ulterior motive with Hedon's words. He does look sus, yeah. He started to yeah. detail the aggressive nature of the eel Bam would be fighting. As if he was trying to scare Bam away from the test that was in front of him. He was. But he then got surprised when he just ran head in. After being warned of all these scary things. And then he was like, Subarashi. As in, he must be like the perfect candidate to climb the tower. Because he's naive. Because he has like a heroic heart. What, what is it? He made it clear that the eel was fast. It was strong. And it was hungry. For all Bam knew, Rachel could already be dead and he would just be risking his life for nothing. Those were the things that Hedon wanted Bam to think about. Imagine Rachel is he dead. He was testing Bam's no very way. purpose. Was his determination to reach his goal enough to overcome the fear of certain death? If not, then he should just leave now. Bam heard these words clearly, but he knew if there was even the he slightest chance for him to see Rachel again that he would take it. So, without hesitation, Bam charged forward. And you know what? I feel like... Uh, I hope I'm proven wrong, bro. But like, if this entire fucking season, he's just simping over Rachel and constantly kind of like throws his needs away to chase after this girl that doesn't seem like he even cares about him. Bro, that's gonna fucking suck. I'm gonna be fucking upset. But I guess there needs to be some kind of build-up. Maybe there'll be like a really cool character development scene where he's like, <laughs> Rachel, I don't need you anymore. I'm locked in. And then he fucking goes with a different girl. Go with Kuhn, actually. Yeah, fuck Rachel. Go with Kuhn. Go with Kuhn and rack Wraith Razor. Who the fuck needs Rachel, bro? She left us. But it kind of makes sense. Because, like, he's like a hatchling. That first hatched out of the egg. Well, came out of the rubble. Saw Rachel. Rachel, like, taught him, like, how to, like, read, write basic ways of life. Well, I tell, taught, probably taught him how to wipe his own ass. She must be, like, a god to him, right? Like, some kind of, like, mother figure. I don't know about love. Maybe, like, motherly love. But I don't think this is, like, a girlfriend interest. I think bro just literally looks at her like, holy shit, you must be my mother. I'm the first, you're the first thing that I've ever seen. So it makes sense that a small boy like him would act this way. Ugh, dude, it's going to take a long time, isn't it? I, I, maybe it's too much for me to have these kind of expectations in season one. But if he, ugh, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to fucking see. That's when we switch to a cutscene involving Evan. Evan. 
This could be covered in a flashback later. Pause. But since we're going in the order of the webtoon, I'll cover it now. Alright. It's in this scene that we get our first glimpse into the parts of the tower that allow travel between the floors. Yeah, what the fuck are they doing? Evan's like a navigator, and Yuri kind of sits there and shits on Evan until Evan figures out a way. And they're like climbing through these random passages of stairs. Like, this is also the tower? Yuri was trying to get to the first floor because she just heard that an irregular had entered. Usually, these people are very strong. So much so Am I not being spoiled right now? It, this is Rachel. She wearing a hoodie. This seems like the outside zone of the battle. Anyways, what the fuck? This is episode one cut content. This fucking guy. So that they are often feared by others. This In the fucking past, guy, they were dude. Beings who possessed Why am I getting pictures of this? Why am I seeing green girl fight this dude? Why? What? I guess it's out of context scene, so it's not really like it doesn't matter. But like, what? What? what why are you giving me like wh whatever? Whatever. Enough power to shake the very foundations. Right, of the I'm, tower. I'm not even fucking looking so, anymore. So, regular bro. entering right now was nothing short of a big deal. That's why Yuri wanted to see who this new potential monster could be. But when she finally got to the first, this new potential monster could be. Remember what Leroto said? A monster has appeared. Fuck. I should have changed my title to episode two title on YouTube videos. You remember how I used Shibisu's face as a thumbnail? I had to. It was a great face. But probably if I just used Bomb's face and then titled the episode, A Monster Has Appeared, it would have been way more hype. Now that I think about it, I should leave it as Shibisu's face, but still change the title, A Monster Has Appeared. Fuck, that would have been hilarious. For there wasn't anything spectacular to be seen. All there was was a simple human boy. He was nothing close to the other irregulars like Urek or Phantominium. Huh? Other irregulars like Burdock or Phantomineo. <laughs> Thank you, subtitles. Uh, what did you say? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Urek or Phantomineo. Urek? Urek. Bro name is U R E K. Urek. Urek or Phantominium. Phantominium. Other irregulars. So we know three irregulars now. Urek, Phantominium, Baum. Yuri wondered if perhaps this boy had some secret power like metamorphosis, but Evan could only comment on how normal Bam looked. Sure, he looked a bit agile, but- Can you guys go to this video and scan through the rest of the video and let me know if there are spoilers, because like, if I go through this shit, and this dude, like, spoils some important shit in the future. Like, he surely wouldn't do that, right? There's, there's no way. Any news is pretty good with, the, you know, not spoiling shit. I, I, I doubt that he's going to spoil me with important shit. He just showed me out of context, you know, screenshots of the show. So, I don't think it matters too much. There was absolutely nothing unusual about him. That's why when they saw that the test was the ball guarded by the white armored eel, they thought for sure it would be impossible for someone as weak as Bam. It okay. became clear that Hedon was trying to get Bam to back down or fail. The test was just too overwhelming. Yuri's reasoning for the situation was that she believed Hedon disliked the chaos that Irregulars brought to the tower. I mean, this type of test was typically what kind of reserved chaos? for those above the 20th floor. Like, what kind of chaos? Okay, so we're already doing shit that should be reserved for 20th floor above. Damn, that's crazy. But, like, what kind of chaos? Irregular causes chaos? It sounds like... Because there does seems to be some kind of like um, political system already, right? With the king of Zahad, the princesses. Aside from that, I don't think we know any other factions. There's like floor administrators, and then there's the king. And I'm sure the king rules over everybody because it's the fucking king. Irregulars comes in. Have they been disrupting the status quo? Like the politics of this world. How things should be run how things should be maintained. Every time an irregular has shown up, shit just went into chaos. Like, Pete, those irregulars just didn't follow the rules and like, fuck shit up. And then King got mad and then King told, you know, head on, no more irregulars? W what is that? And even then, this one was still a harder variation to it. On the other hand, Yuri didn't seem to mind this chaos at all. In fact, she looked as if she yearned for the type of excitement an irregular could bring. 
Yuri's just horny for a cute boy, isn't she? So, when she saw that Bam was still going to take the test even though the odds were stacked against him, she couldn't resist dropping in to lend a hand. You see, this whole time Yuri and Evan were watching Bam from above. That's how they were able to make their timely entrance. As it was in the anime, Bam couldn't understand what Yuri was saying without using what's known as a pocket. Language Apparently, translation. it was the job of the administrator to distribute this tool. But Hadon said that he simply forgot to. Which was rather odd considering he's supposed to be the oldest administrator within the tower. Sounds intentional. Sounds like he wants to set up Bam for failure. Because he doesn't want irregulars. Like we said, right? We, it, it's, it's probably in his best interest to not give Bam the infrastructure, the tools to succeed. Regardless, it was a tool that Bam needed to have. So Yuri called Evan down from where they were to give him one. At first, Evan was pretty reluctant, because assisting Bam would be against the tower rules. Even being at the first floor was something that could get them into a lot of trouble with the king. But as Yuri's navigator, they were pretty much a team. And since Yuri was already down there, it didn't really matter anymore. Plus, Evan had a couple extra pockets that Bam could use. Here's a pocket for you. Someone like Bam would receive an E-rank pocket. Lucky for him, Evan too? and Yuri were high-ranked rankers, which is the t Rankers! Title! They already climbed to the top of the tower, but it's a hot princess, I'm a sure. I'm, don't they like spawn at the top of the tower? Title given to people who have already ascended the tower. That being the case, the only pockets on them at the time were of the A-rank. Now, the reason these pockets even have a rank to begin with is because they do a lot more than simply translate different languages to the common tongue of Mexis. What did they- You could what, say what? it Mexis? was every person's key to survival, but that alone wasn't going to be enough to pass the test. The skill gap was still far too high. You see, Bam was different from any of the other irregulars, so it wasn't fair to test him at what Hedon considered to be appropriately leveled. Urek Phantominium both irregulars, but Bam is like even more different. Like those two are different, but Bam is like even more different. Head on decides to give him a test that scales even harder. The potential, the amount of glazing they're doing for Bam in this show. And yeah, he's the fucking main character. Of course, he, he needs to be, have just like infinite potential. Different as in weak? Didn't he just see appropriate leveled? Hold up, hold up. You see, Bam was different from any other irregular. So it wasn't fair to test him at what Hedon considered to be appropriately leveled. Yeah, it wouldn't be appropriate to consider him what's like, why give him a level 1 test if he's level 1? Give him a level 5 test because he's even more OP. So because Yuri was making such a big fuss right? out of it, that's when Hedon decided to mix things up a bit. He suggested loaning the Black March to Bam. I guess he did give him like an advantage. No, no, no. He was ready to send him in. And then... Hedon was like, nah, this gets built different. Just go and fucking bust the ball. And then Yuri was like, hold the fuck up, you're insane. Give him something to fucking work with. And then Hedon was like, all right, Black March. Now, Yuri didn't just give it to him because of his cute face, though. <laughs> Did she also want to see if he could actually pull the Black March? Because, like, she can't do it. Because Black March just is not into the Yuri. I'm sorry. Black March only cares about cute boys, too. I guess just like owner, just like master, huh? Just like how Hedon did, she first questioned his determination and resolve, making sure that he was prepared for the worst. Death was more than likely, but it also wasn't something he feared. What Bam feared was... Losing Rachel is more scary than dying. Something far worse than death. And that's exactly what Yuri saw. So she had no issue with lending out the black mark. Yeah, there's a lot of different swords here. I don't see a mark of Zahad on the left side. So maybe these are not also Zahad blades. Also, they might be in a different opposite side or lower or upper. Who fucking knows? But more weapons in the arsenal here. To him. The black march was a special type of weapon. At its core, it's what's known as a needle, mainly what? used to stab and pierce. And that's why the blade doesn't look like a blade. And even like, um... E even the green girl's blade, right? It looks like a fucking whip. These swords are not really swords. They look sword-like, but I guess a needle is just piercing. It's just like a, a rapier. Is that what that is? This particular needle was the strongest out of all of them. It originated from a collection known as the 13-month series created- Are they all needles? Hold up. 13-month series. So, obviously- Black March, what I say, right? Color month. 13 months. 13? Hold up. But there's only 12 months in a, in a, 
the, the calendar year. What? what? The thirteenth month. Okay. Uh, who knows? From January to December, maybe there's like a special fucking month. But there's got to be thirteen blades. But of all of them, are they all needles? There must be like may maybe like four of them are needles, and like Black March is the strongest out of the four. Um, it's it's an arbitrary number I'm giving. Who knows actually how many needles there are? Mainly used to stab and pierce. And this particular needle was the strongest out of all of them. It originated from a collection known as the 13 Month Series, created by the famed blacksmith Ashel Edwaru. Ashel Edwaru, he's the one that created the Zahad Princess Blade, 13 Month Series, okay? But even with this great weapon, Bam's likelihood of success was only marginally better. The weapon can only ever be as good as the wielder. And the difference in strength between Bam and the Eel wasn't going to change even with the Black March. But he's there cute. was, however, one way to pass the test. Evan, whose natural position was a guide, was able to easily figure it out. It pretty much consisted of what we saw. Hold the fuck up. I thought this dude was only used as a GPS tracking system, like figure out the map. Now he's making it sound like the role of a navigator is just, just generic problem solving. As in like, he can figure out anything what I, I i thought it's like all right here here's a road left or right evan where do we go evan left milady all right about fucking time you fucking dwarf guy but then it's like he has like the problem solver like answer talker ability from like zatch bell like literally give me a situation i will figure out the optimal solution no matter how complex it is Rather than try to run past the eel or fight it head to head, the best option was to feign helplessness. This appearance of willing defeat would result in the eel choosing to swallow Bam whole, Lucky. giving him the opportunity to strike from a position where the eel couldn't defend. Normally, any other weapon wouldn't do much damage to the eel, but the needle but will. Because Bam now had the Black March, a solid strike could go so far as to render the creature unconscious for a bit. This would give Bam enough time to get to the ball and break it. But Evan didn't share these details with Bam, even though he knew it was the only path long before the test had even started. That's fucked up, Evan. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> Wait, did he intentionally not do it? He should have probably helped out. But if he helped out, it wouldn't be fair. Would he have passed the test? I'm not sure. You see, um, the guy's job. I, I, I don't know. Shouldn't Evan have kind of... No, no, no. <laughs> During the whole thing, no, no, no. The way I remember it... He already was following the optimal path by acting dead, feigning ignorance and just getting swallowed up before Evan could even narrate saying this is the optimal way. So I, I don't think it matters too much, but like he probably could have just told him beforehand. Was to only show the path to those who were capable of walking it. And okay. to Evan, he didn't think that anyone, let alone Bam, was capable of doing this. Uh... Only someone insane would allow themselves to be swallowed by such a fearsome creature. He underestimated the insanity of 25th Palm. So, rather than letting him die with the false hope that he could pass the test, he instead decided to let Bam choose his own path. Okay. A path that he assumed was going to result in Bam running around for hours before realizing his efforts were futile. And once he did, Yuri would just step in and save him. Evan pretty much wanted Bam to discover his own limits and weaknesses. At least by doing that, Bam would still be alive. So, of course it came as a shock when he saw that Bam not only had the courage and the determination he fucking to did it. the right the path, optimal but strat. also the intuition to figure it out on his own. This fucking madman. It became mad that losing the one he was in search of was a fear that drowned out all the others. Losing Rachel is more scary than, lose, than lo dying. <sighs> she... I hope that- why does she just like abandon us? I just feel bad because like, I know nothing about Rachel, right? Like so far, we know fucking nothing about her. We just know that she existed before and she left us. So I'm just left with like a very bitter taste in my mouth. They're like, what the fuck, bitch? I hardly know you and you're already making me hard to like you. She must be a really good character then, right? She, she must be like a super good character if Bam is like doing this. But then again, does a child know any better? Does a child know any better? Would a child have good judgment skills? Is, is this Stockholm Syndrome? What's going on? But even after all of that, Bam's power alone wasn't enough to shatter the ball. Normally, no ball from any other test would be able to withstand a strike from the Black March. But it's not here, activated, Bam right? Was struggling to even make a dent. Head on clearly manipulated the test to make it as hard as possible for Bam to pass. This motherfucker, see? This motherfucker made it harder for us intentionally because he saw that he's different from Uruk and. Phantom Minium.
that's what he said in the earlier scene, right? Like, Obama's, like, different. He's like, oh, yeah, he's constructed uniquely, even amongst the regulars. Still, though, Bam never gave up. He pulled out the cleaver he had when he entered the gates. Why would Hedon want to do that? Hedon wants to maintain the structure in the tower. We were just talking about that, right? Hedon doesn't want new irregulars coming in and fucking shit up because every time an irregular show, apparently there is great chaos. So he's just making it harder for Bam. All right. Ready? Tinfoil theory time. Now, this is not a tinfoil, but... Yeah, he hates cute boys. Or, head on wants to test exactly how strong Bam could be. Head on doesn't actually care about the status quo of the tower. He's in search for the one that has been prophesized. As like the fucking Lisa al Gaib. One day, some thirsty ass kid named after a fucking knight will show up and change the tower forever. And in order to test if he truly is the Lisa al Gaib. He did this. You think so? You think you, you think there's some kind of prophecy? You you think so? We're 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 reaching a little bit too hard, but based on the way, because like I only say this because of Hedon's like reactions to Bam whenever he like ran and he was like smiling. Hedon was like genuinely excited. It seemed like he was excited based on his sinister smile. If why would a guy smile like that? Right? He should be like like. Not maybe it was like a different type of smile, maybe because like it's specifically when he ran in and he was like Subara she and then he and he ran in and Hedon was like oh fuck maybe he is the prophesized one, I don't know. Watson tried to hit the ball again, but that only made the cleaver shatter on impact. So with seemingly all options exhausted, Yuri was about to intervene. That's when Evan came up with the idea to ignite the Black March. Ignite By that shit. So, Call upon it. true power would awaken and Bam would be able to shatter the ball. That is such a cool word. Ignite the blade. Ignite the Black March, right? Basically, it's basically like activating it, pulling from the sheath, like, unre like releasing the Shikai, like Bankai. It's kind of, right? It's basically make the blade to its full potential. But the word ignite, that's so unique. The thing is, not even Yuri had been able to achieve such a feat. Honestly, it kind of makes me think of like Beyblades. Because like the needle kind of looks like a cord. Like it's like a bendy cord. So when I'm thinking Ignite, I'm thinking like pulling the fucking Beyblade cord and then like the friction and it's just causing like the ignition, <laughs> you know? This is because the Black March was a sentient weapon. It's possessed by the spirit of a girl who only lends her power to those that she likes. And is... Hold up, hold up, hold the up. So... Black March is a sentient weapon, but is every other weapon also a sentient weapon? Like the green girl with her whip. I wonder if Black March is the only sentient weapon. It would be cool if each, you know, 13 series had its own special, like, person, like, for her, for example. Asked by the spirit of a girl who only lends her power to those that she likes. And Yuri wasn't one of those people. <laughs> she always did find it difficult to make a conversation with it. This art is crazy. This, this, <laughs> get lost, girls. This guy is mine. She found that the Black March was somewhat of a free world tomboy that liked to do as she pleased. The two were actually quite similar to each other. Man, what kind of tomboy looks like this? God damn, I need me some tomboys. So Evan had a feeling that if anyone could appeal to the Black March, then it would be Bam. Cute boy, yeah. He wasn't quite sure why, but there was something about Bam's character that attracted people to this is cute. That's the whole thing. Episode one, the fucking theme of the story is be cute and you'll get lucky. And he felt that whatever it was, it could possibly work on the Black March. So as Bam called for the Black March's help, its spirit revealed herself from the needle. And she too asked Bam what his purpose for climbing the tower was. Mm. What type of desire was pushing him forward? Pussy money the weed. The answers were almost always money and power. But when Bam said that he was only looking for Rachel, even the Black March was she said that was boring, right? She's like, what? That's fucking lame. But here's my powers anyways. I was confused as to what he meant. Was this Rachel some sort of jewel? A position of power? Or perhaps one of the most beautiful women in the tower? The real answer was that Rachel was none of these things. To Bam, she was simply a precious friend that he wanted to see once more. Precious friend. I, I think that she's more like a mother figure, but okay, like some kind of guardian, but okay. Now, even though it was a boring reason, the Black March found an interest in the young boy standing in front of her. 
because so, it was so unique. For the first time, the Black March ignited. What this meant was that Ignition. the power increased to the point that it was able to shatter the ball. But the way that the ball burst wasn't anything like Yuri had seen before. There was something that Hedon did to it that made it different from the others. He was clearly planning something. That's smile, that's smile, that dude. The plan remains completely shrouded by mystery. <sighs> that, dude, I, I... I just feel like Hedon really wants Bomb to succeed. I feel like this entire test was not to, like, be mean to Bomb. But, like, really see, like, are you the prophesized child? I hope there's a fucking prophecy, bro. Bro, if there's, like, this, like, Lisa Nargaib kind of prophecy, like, the people having, like, the tower has been waiting for centuries for this kid to show up and change everything. Oh, I, I, I love plots like that. That's why I love Dune so much. I don't know. Something about religious fucking cults and prophecies is just so compelling to me. And, like, yo, if he is, like, the child of prophecy that we've been waiting for and head on's like, this is the fucking one. Give him the Black March. Let him go fucking in. Oh, Oh, bro, that'd be so hype. Something. Though that plan remains completely shrouded by mystery. There were a few hints, though, as to what it could entail and who could be involved. The first was that the test he prepared for Bam had a difficulty equivalent to the value of his wish. So, considering the extreme difficulty of this initial test, this could imply that there's more at stake with Bam's wish than perhaps even Bam realizes himself. The wish to find Rachel was scaled with the difficulty to test. I want to, I want to, the wish was I want to find Rachel, right? What was the wish? I want to find Rachel. Help me find Rachel. I, I need to climb a tower. Let me, let me find Rachel. It's, it's all Rachel. So something about Rachel there is quite significant if the difficulty of the test scaled accordingly. Okay. The second was that after everyone was gone, Hedon appears to be talking to an unknown person. He asks that person if they watched Bam succeed. Did break the fourth wall in the anime, right? Cause he does this thing with the wand and he and then and then the, the eel is like disintegrated. Didn't he break the fourth wall? He like talked to us, right? Almost as if to imply that the person watching expected Bam to fail. But now Who's that watching? he had passed, Hedon now wanted to know what this person was going to do next. Now, the only hint we have towards this person's identity was that they Miss. are female. Other Miss. There was a girl watching the entire time. Rachel? Rachel was watching is she that important that an admin would fucking I don't know I, I have no idea what this Rachel is maybe Rachel is a hidden princess guys like whoa plot twist Rachel's last name it was Zahad all this time she has a princess blade whoa I don't know this is, uh, it's beyond me who this miss could be King Zahad Queen Zahad Rachel Another princesses, an admin on a different floor that's expecting bomb. Maybe that makes sense, right? We're, we're about to go to the next floor, right? Even like um, the red scene. Hold up, hold up. Let me, let me, let me, here, here's another guess. Uh, you know that scene at the end of episode two? At the end of episode two, there was like this red room with a dude wearing like traditional Korean clothing with the shitload of red rooms. Do you guys remember that scene? What if it's him? No, that means that's got to be a girl. Shh, that person does look kind of androgynistic, right? Androgynous. I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking, like, what if it's, like, the admin of the next floor? Because that person seemed, like, kind of important at the outro episode, too. Other than that, Miss? it's interesting to note that someone was working with the tower's oldest floor administrator to prevent Bam from ascending. That's a detail that I think may have been worth mentioning. To prevent him from ascending. Tower's oldest floor administrator to prevent Bam from ascending. This miss was trying to prevent Bam from ascending. Which kind of then contradicts like my entire theory of head on trying to help and trying to, you know, believe in the prophecy kid if such a thing exists. But I'm still going to go hard with it. I, I want to die on this hill. This like prophecy is compelling to me. I want to say that head on is operating with his own means. And this miss person, while she may have not wanted Bam to like ascend, head on secretly did want to and was trying to actively support and kind of test it. That's a detail that I think may have been worth mentioning. Anyway, before cutting straight to the next floor, there's another scene with Yuri and Evan traveling again. There was a lot of characterization involving these two that the- Yeah, characterization as in Yuri shitting on Evan and then Evan saying, Okay, princess, this way. The anime decided to skip out on. I'm surprised that Evan's not being sat on like the Yuri right here. Instead of this rock, it should be Evan right now. In this scene specifically, the two were making their way to the second floor to find Bam and get the Black March back. 
how bad is the spoiler? You said it's out of it's. You you said it's like um some scenes. Ah, it's not too bad. It, it, this this seems like you know a next test kind of scene, so it shouldn't be too bad. While doing so. It seems is it that bad? Like, it, it seems like we already got spoiled of the green girl, you know, fighting some dudes in some kind of arena. And if I look ahead to, like, 34 preview, it kind of just looks like that. So it's probably not that bad. That Bam had left quite it's already too late. Evan, his unyielding determination to find Rachel made Evan think about his own past. Was he at one point during the early days of climbing the tower similar to Bam and his idealism? Or did he change somewhere along the way and become a different person? Evan... Whoa, 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 what? Made Evan, Evan is having like an existential crisis? Think about his own past. Was he at one point during the early days of climbing the tower similar to Bam and his idealism? Or did he change somewhere along the way and to become a different person? Ah, uh, Bam is like showing such determination and resolve that you would think is insane to the average person, but these all come from... Like a naive kid that doesn't know any better but has a lot of ideals and then basically Evan's forgotten about his dreams is what he's saying. Evan couldn't even remember anymore why he first entered the tower. Gotcha. That journey was so long ago that he wasn't even sure why he became a ranker. So he wondered if Bam would one day reach that same point. Surely this journey he was embarking on would expose him to all sorts of new seductive pleasures. Perhaps one of <laughs> seductive these may pleasures? him away from his overall goal. Evan thought this to be the inevitable outcome. Yeah, wait, 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 what do you, wait, wait, what do you mean? You're gonna say seductive pleasures and then say it's gonna distract him from his overall goal and you show me Kuhn, so Kuhn is the seductive pleasure. And we're gonna forget about Rachel. Because the original goal was Rachel, right? But then it's like, Annie News is like, <laughs> Kuhn Agero Agni, right? That's just like a full name, right? That's, a, that's what they said, right? So be careful of Kuhn. So they're saying, <laughs> seductive pleasure and Kuhn. <laughs> One of these may end up straying him away from his overall goal. Evan thought this to be the inevitable outcome. Without a doubt, Bam would change along the way, okay. much like how he and Yuri did. Anyway, the floor they were headed to was known as Evan Kell's floor, or the Evan? floor of test. It's the Evan Kell's test floor. Is it? E I don't know what Evan's full name is, but this floor is called Evan Kell's floor. The one where we did the battle royale in? Interesting. Who was Evan Kill? The actual floor that all chosen regulars go to when they first enter the tower. Its purpose is to test the qualifications of all those chosen. Only those who can pass all the tests of this floor are deemed capable of climbing the tower. Not even just the battle royale. The Shinsu test, and I'm sure in episode 3 we're gonna get a different test. Yeah, this guy. This is the person that I was talking about as the miss, but... Webtoon characters, they're very androgynistic. So like, could be a dude, could be a girl. I'm talking about the miss figure in the, um, who Hedon was talking to in the beginning because maybe it's like a different admin of a separate floor. I don't fucking know, guys. I'm just trying to make some guesses. So all these tests in the early episodes aren't even part of the actual tower climb. They're pretty much all just preliminaries for the real thing. The first of which was the culling of 400 to 200. That's bringing right. Bringing us to the end of episode one and to the end of our first cut content. Hopefully you all enjoyed getting to know the story of Tower of God a bit. I and did, Mr. Any News. If you did, be sure to let me know. Yeah, I just wish that you wouldn't use so many out-of-context fucking, you know, scenes and fucking screenshots from future episodes that kind of spoils me. Not that important, I guess. It's because out-of-context pictures. But yeah, there's uh, we're definitely going to be reacting to these, you know, Any News, Tower of God. Now, there's only 10 episodes here. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if I do Any News, like Any News, like cut content, like Tower of God episode like 11 i wonder why it's not part of the thing but it is what it is i'll try to figure out everything that we can do in order to prepare for season two but imagine it like this every tuesday on stream we'll be watching an annual cut content of the previous week's episode and watching a new episode and that's how we're going to be prepping uh, until we get to the end of this current seasonal anime and then there's like a gap week where we will basically do like a marathon every day we'll be reacting so that we'll be caught on just in time in july for season two any uh sorry tower of god hope you guys enjoyed